In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a Google form, all the questions you have available to you and how they all work, the different options they provide, and then how to publish the form and get it out to your following so they can actually send your responses and then how you collect that data after they've filled out those forms that you've created. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, let's head in the screen capture and start creating these awesome Google Forms. I'll see you there. The first thing you need to create a Google Form is a Google Drive account. If you don't have one yet, just head over to drive.google.com and you can easily create one. Just sign in with your Gmail account and it adds it right to your account. If you don't have a Gmail account, you can create one right then. It's free, it's simple, it's fast. Then once you're in the Google Drive here, click on the new button, click on more or hover over more, and then click on Google Forms. And now we have our form creator. It's not the prettiest, but it's also not the most ugly form creator. We can change a lot of the color options by going to the color palette up here, but the design more or less stays about static. You just change the color really. But the, the cool thing with Google Forms is you can add this form to a website afterwards as well and use this instead of a form builder on your website, which might be a lot less frustrating for you. So we're going to go through each of the question types that we have available to us. So I'm going to call this a test form. You can add a description here if you want to. It's not required. It pre-creates a question for you. I'm just going to call this question one. And on the drop down here, we have all our options for this question type. I'm going to go through each one of these. I'm going to choose short answer first. And it has a short answer field here, which we can't use now because we're just building the form. But on the front end, once it's a usable form, they'll just type in their answer. And we can duplicate this uh, question by just clicking the duplicate button. We can delete it by hitting that button, make it required or not required. Click on these three dots. To add more information, we can add a description if we want to, also not required if you don't want to do it. Then we can add response validation, so the response has to meet certain requirements. We have a few options available for that, number, text, length, regular expression. Each one of these is going to have certain options. So the length, we can limit the character amount, either minimum or maximum number of characters. For the text, text has to contain Maybe it's an email field that has to contain an email address. Maybe it's a URL field that has to contain a URL. Maybe you don't want them to have an email address in there. So you can have doesn't contain and you'd put the at symbol to make sure there's no email address in there. For the number field, you can choose any requirement or any comparison of numbers and you can add a number in here. So maybe the number they enter has to be greater than 10 or less than 10 or equal to 10. So depending on what you want them to enter, this is where you use the response validation to kind of guide them in the right direction. You can give them custom error messages as well if you want to do that. Not a lot of questions require that kind of response validation, but if you do require it, you have it right there. To add a new question, all we do is hit the plus icon right here. I'm gonna call this question two, very creative. Make this a paragraph answer, and we just have a long answer field here. Same options as before, required, not required. Description, response, validation, same as the last one, just a longer, a longer amount of text they can enter. We have these six dots right up here. We can use that to drag and drop questions and move them around. Pretty handy. If you want to add titles to certain areas, just click on a question and click on TT and that will add below that question a title and description area so you can break your form up into different sections in that way or you can also just gonna click on delete to get rid of that you can also click on this button to add a section so it's gonna split right below that question so say question one is part of this first section question two is part of this next section and then you can add as many sections as you want. And in later questions, and in other question types like multiple choice and the drop downs, you can have people move to different sections based on their responses, which is pretty neat. I'm just gonna create another section. So we have three sections now. I'm not gonna title any of these. I'm gonna bore you with that. 
Click on the plus icon to add another question. I'm gonna call this now question three. Make a multiple choice, which is our next option. Multiple choice, we have the option of adding an image in the background. We can add an image for each option as well. Currently there's only one option. Click on add option to add more. You'd wanna obviously title these differently than option one, option two, option three, but you get the idea. Add the other option like this. You can drag and drop them to rearrange them using those six dots. Down here we can duplicate, delete, and require like before. Inside these options are a little bit different. We can add a description like before, but now we can add go to section based on answer. So if we add that, maybe if they choose option one, we want to send them back to section one. We do it just like this. They answer option four, want to send them to section two. So this way you can have people go to appropriate spots of the form or survey or poll or whatever it is you're making based on what their answers are. This is best done after you've completed the entire form because usually in this case I had them jumping backwards in the form but you probably want them jumping forwards. So it's best to create your whole document first and then choose the sections you want to jump them to afterwards. So I'm just going to get rid of that section jumping because I don't want that. Last option we have shuffle option order to randomize the option order. I'm going to click on the plus to add a new question. We have checkboxes next, same as before. Multiple choice allows you to select one option. With checkboxes, you can select multiple. Same options as before, add the options, add the other. Down here is the same, make that required. Response validation is available for checkboxes. You can shuffle the order and add a description. Plus icon for another one. Question five, drop down. In the drop downs, we add these options here, but they're gonna appear in a small little drop down. So they take up a lot less space than the multiple choice, for example, but they give you the same results because we're gonna make that required. We also have go to section in our more options area. So the drop down and multiple choice are pretty much the same thing, just the drop down is gonna take up less space. Plus icon again to add question six. And question six is a file upload. Now here we have kind of a disclaimer first. The files will be uploaded to the owner's Google Drive. So you're the, the form owner. You're gonna have these files uploaded to your Google Drive. And the person who is uploading them has to sign into their Google account to be able to upload. So if you're okay with those two things, click on continue and you can set some options. We can allow specific file types, which I recommend you do so you don't have random stuff uploaded. Pick the one you want. If the file type you want is not one of these eight, then you gotta uncheck this clearly so they can upload what you want. You wanna specify what that is in your question, or you can add the description and specify the file type you want in the description. In this case, I'm just gonna choose PDF. You can define the number of files to be uploaded, the maximum number, so one is the max. If you choose five, they can upload any number between one and five. If you choose 10, they can upload any number between one and 10. So just by choosing, it doesn't mean they have to upload five or 10, they can upload any number in between those. Maximum file size, choose the appropriate file size, a lot of options. There's, again, this is a maximum, so just because you have 10 gigabytes, doesn't mean the file has to be 10, but they're allowed to upload anything up to that file size. And then down here, same options as before, gonna make it required. Only a description is available in the more options. Next question type, I'm gonna call this question seven just to be very creative. Make this a linear scale. You've seen a lot of these before. It's gonna start from scratch. So I'm gonna have zero as my first one, two, 10. So I like it, it's gonna be the zero option. I don't like it. So what this is gonna create is a scale from zero to 10 where zero is I like it and 10 is I don't like it. So if we add a new question, it's gonna show a preview right here. So this is what it'll look like on the form. So this is a, a degree of liking something. You've seen these before. You probably, now that you see what it looks like, you know exactly how to use it in your form. But either way, they pick one of these numbers to show how much they like something or whatever your rating scale is. Question eight. This one is a little more complicated, but much cooler, multiple choice grid. If you consider this like scale up here, often surveys have multiple of these like scales, 
with the multiple choice grid, you can actually create all of those in one grid if you wanted to. I'm gonna show you what I mean. We can actually see a preview in here like we previewed this one, but you can see it on the live form. But for the rows, I'm just gonna have some fruit, fruit names for the rows. Apples, oranges, peaches, and pears. And then for the columns, I'm gonna have also four columns. I like, I kind of like, I don't like, I avoid like the plague. So you don't have to have the same number of columns as you do rows, just so happened I did in this case. It's gonna add another one to prove you don't have to have that. I'm gonna call this dragon fruit. And what's gonna happen is each one of these rows, they're gonna be able to choose from this rating scale for each row, which is basically creating this like scale over and over and over all in one question. And down below, you can require a response for each row if you want. So you don't have to have them answering each one, but you can, which I'm gonna do in this case. So in the more options, we can add a description. We can limit one response per column. So if someone says they like apples, then they can't like anything else, which you may or may not want for your question type. I don't want it in this case, so I'm not gonna select that option. You can also shuffle the row order if you want to. I'm not gonna do that either here. I'm gonna move on to the next question, which is question nine. And the question type is the date. So we can choose month, day, year, duplicate it, delete it, make it required. In here, we can also add a description and include the time, if you want them to add the time right in there. Question 10 is a separate time option. So if you don't collect the date, if you are collecting the date and the time, I just put them both in the same question. But if you're collecting one or the other, just do it this way and then have a separate time option and make that required. You can have duration as well. So for how long it takes them to do something to get dressed in the morning, I guess it could be a, a question there. So that's the last question type we have available to us. So the survey is done in this case. And you might be wondering why there's no save button. Well, if you look up here, it says all changes save to drive. So everything's automatically saved. It saves as you make a change. It saves it continuously as you go. So there's no save button in Google Drive. It's just always saving. Once you get responses, we're gonna test this in just a minute, but you go to the responses tab and you can see the responses. Up here, we have the color palette like we saw earlier. You can pick the color of your form and then we can preview the form clicking here, which we're gonna do in just a second. Settings, we can collect email addresses if we want, send response receipts. So if someone fills out the form, they can get a receipt or an email saying, hey, great job, thanks. You can have them required to sign in. So you can restrict this if you're using G Suite instead of just playing Google Drive, you can restrict this to people who are part of your company, which this form is defaulting to in this case. You can limit to one response. So if you don't want people filling it out over and over, this is where you limit that. If you want them to be able to edit the form after they submit it, you can check this box. You can show them summary charts and text responses after they fill it out if you want them to. The presentation, you can show a progress bar, which I usually like to do, although there's only one one page, so it's not that important here. But if you have multiple pages, a progress bar becomes very important. Shuffle question order if you want to. Show a link to submit another response. This becomes irrelevant when you only allow them to respond one time. So those are two conflicting options. Make sure they're not both active. Confirmation message. This is a message they see afterwards. I'm just gonna say thanks. Quizzes. We can make this a quiz, which means we're adding point values to each of the questions. If we turn this on, all these options down here become available. In this case, we didn't make a quiz. I can make it a topic of another video if you wanna see that, but these are the options that you have for quizzes. I'm gonna turn that off again. Click on save. This section you do have to save. And then we can just click on send to send this to someone. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Send via email, via a link, or via embedded HTML. And we have this message here. This cannot be embedded because of the file upload question. So if we didn't have the file upload, this would show HTML here that you can embed into your website. So we have this link here. I'm just gonna copy that. Just click the copy button down here. You can also share via social media if you wanna do that. Share directly with your followers on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, which is pretty handy. But for now, I'm just gonna copy that link, create a new tab, paste that URL in there, and we've loaded this guy up. As you can see, the different sections are on different pages. So question one was on one section, if you recall, that puts it on one page. So my answer here is 
test one, just so I know which page we're on. Here's our progress bar. I'm gonna click on next. Question two, next section is loaded. We didn't add a title, so it's untitled. I'm gonna call this test two. Next, and now all the other questions are all contained on the last section. So we're gonna have a whole list of questions here. Question three, I'm just gonna choose one of those. Question four, we're gonna choose two of these. From the drop downs, let's choose one of those. I'm just gonna add a file by dragging and dropping. Just gonna take this test PDF right here, drag and drop it in there. So there's the file size, we can add more files if we want to and if the form allows us to. Remember that setting, one, five, or 10 is the maximum. So they can upload multiple if they need to. Click on upload when they're done. File uploads pretty quickly because it's small. Here's the file right here. Our like questions, we can choose whatever rating we want. This is the uh, multiple like one I like to call it. So here it says this question requires one answer per row. Got a little warning there that popped up. So you have to answer every single one. You know I like that. So there we go, we got those answers in there. The date, nice little date picker shows up. Choose any date they want to. The time, gotta type in the time. So maybe it's 3.15 a.m. or p.m. Then after they're all done, click on submit. This is the custom response that I entered in those settings where it says thanks. They can add another response because I didn't limit them to only one response. They can add another one if they want to. Now, if we head back into our form over here, we now have, didn't even refresh, so it's all done by Ajax, updated in real time. We now have one response right here. Click on responses, so we have this little walkthrough here. Now you can switch between seeing a summary or seeing each response one by one. You can remove individual responses from this view being the individual view. Click on got it if you get those messages. You can see the answers. If you scroll through here, this will be an aggregate response or an aggregate graph as more responses come in. And it's pretty handy stuff. It's, it's nicely visualized, nicely presented. And you can see the individuals where you can delete them. You can scroll through if you have multiple answers. You can go directly to a certain response, maybe number 40. We don't have a number 40, so it just deletes it. But if there was a number 40, it'd go to number 40. And then you can also have the option of seeing these in a spreadsheet or a Google Sheet. So if you click on this button right here, create a new spreadsheet, enter a name, enter a better one than I have there, click on create, and now it's gonna create a spreadsheet that contains all those answers. So now you can do spreadsheet type stuff with those responses, which sometimes you might wanna do. So that takes us to the end of the Google Form creation tutorial. So that's all there is to creating Google Forms. In another video that's coming up soon, I'm gonna show you how to embed this form onto your WordPress site, and it actually works on any type of website, not just WordPress. And if you have any questions or comments about Google Forms specifically, please leave them down below this video. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And next up is clicking one of the things that popped up over here, or subscribe down here. And till next time, Keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.